For those of you who don't have a strong background in psychology, you, you really got a lot of classic psych st studies over the last few weeks. Uh, you started off by looking at uh, Watson and Bandura and Pavlov and Th Thorndike and, and exploring behaviorism with some examples and, and some, some videos of, of classic experiments. And then you moved on to studying uh, Piaget and developmental psychology, a little bit of Kohlberg, uh, which draws from Piaget's work and, and sets it uh, within the context of moral development. And then uh, we're switching gears now this week and we're looking at the, the, the mind and brain and, and mostly with a focus on memory. So um, there's a, that's a, a lot of a sort of classic um, foundations for studying psychology and psychology of learning all packed into a three-week period. So hopefully uh, you were able to, to get a lot out of it. I thought that the discussion on the Piaget video uh, started, to, uh, started to pick up in certain spots. Uh, as you probably noticed, it, it seemed to wander a little bit off topic, which, which can be okay. Uh, but uh, I was glad to see that uh, some, some student leadership emerged and we started to, to bring it back in a little bit. And I, I appreciate that. I look for that uh, in a grad school uh, discussion class. So uh, with the Piaget video, uh, it was interesting to look at the dynamic uh, between the two parents. It was also interesting to see uh, the different um, approaches that people had to where the child's developmental stage was. So if you think about the discussion question that I had for you and watching the video, think about our own teaching. Uh, to what extent do we do a good job or a bad job of, of meeting students where they are developmentally and then in a very inappropriate ways trying to move them forward in their development. Um, through scaffolding techniques and plus one and things like that that we talked about in class. So, well, those once we sort of we wandered a little bit, we did a little bird walking, which is okay, um, uh, as long as we find our way back on path. And we did. We found our way back on path, and people were able to integrate those ideas uh, into into the reading. So, uh, as we move forward now, uh, we're going to be looking at um, at memory and how people memorize, and and obviously uh, schooling. It's not just about behaviorism, although it is. There's a, there are a lot of behavior elements in schools. Even if you don't think there are, uh, sometimes we like to think that we're, we're operating on a higher level. Uh, but, but there are. We're, we're, people are, are constantly uh, being rewarded for certain types of behaviors, sometimes on a very base level. Uh, even, even the bell schedule, as people noticed, out, uh, noticed um, and brought out in, in the dialogue, uh, on the discussion board has uh, certain elements of behaviorism uh, built into it. So, um, as we as we think about memorization, well, there's a there's a lot of memorization in schools, and again, there are times when we we might like to think that we're we're asking students to operate on a on a different level than simply rote memorization, but not all memorization is rote memorization. Let's make that clear right now. But uh, I want you to think about memorization. Or broadly defined, and, and look at all the different ways that that the reading approaches uh, how we memorize things. The, the main focus that I'd like you to have as you think about uh, these different studies and in, in how we remember is is to understand first uh, the two two key components. Uh, one is how we store information, and the other is how we retrieve information. Uh, and they're related but different components of the same thing that we ask students to do. So I, I want you to keep that in mind. And then I want you to be thinking about what we know in the field of psychology about how people store information and how they retrieve information. Are we doing a, a good job? And to, when we are doing a good job of supporting students' um, memory and retrieval skills, what does that look like? And when we're not doing such a good job, what does that look like? And how might we improve? So that, that'll be the, the focus that we have going into this week. Um, when we come back after being online this week, uh, we'll spend some time thinking about how we're going to integrate some of the ideas that we've covered over these, these last three weeks online into your own theory of learning. In other words, your own ideas about what appropriate 
teaching and learning would look like in the school setting that you're most interested in studying uh, based in this psychological theory. So uh, looking forward to seeing you online. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to shoot me an email.